15. May I have a roll call, please? Councilmember Eisen? Here. Councilmember Kowalczyk? Here. Councilmember Arbeck? Here. Vice Mayor Penrose? Here. Mayor Reddick? Here. Please all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Welcome this evening. We have a special order of business, uh, a proclamation to the American Association of University Women who are celebrating, I believe, uh, well, it's over 130 years, correct? But we're actually celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Coastside chapter tonight. So we have a proclamation for that. But I just wanted to go over um, a few items, a little bit of history about our local chapter that's um, some great local color. And uh, so, um, did you know that they started the committee to establish a dedicated bike route from Montera to Half Moon Bay in 1969? Uh, that was due to the leadership of AAUW. Uh, they set up a recycling center run by members in 1971. You know, real leadership. Um, they taught English to farm workers and conducted a nursery school program for their children, also in 1971. I think that's great history. Uh, they started a preschool vision screening program in 1980. And they created the Women of Excellence Awards to honor local women for their commitment to the betterment of the Coastside community in 1985. This, folks, is a really respectable group. And today, their members continue to volunteer at local schools and offer substantive monthly programs on wide-ranging topics for their members and the public. And I'd like to uh, invite uh, Mary Alice and some other members of the AAUW up to the podium to accept a proclamation. And I might add that we have two or three of the original members of two. the chapter. Two. 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 Well, I hope you introduce yourselves after we do the proclamation. So, whereas the American Association of University Women is the nation's leading voice of promoting equity and education for women and girls, and whereas since its founding in 1881, AAUW members have examined and taken positions on the fundamental issues of the day, as we've seen tonight, educational, social, economic, and political, and whereas the Half Moon Bay branch was founded in 1967, and two of the founding members are still active, as are the 161 other members drawn from all parts of the coast side, and whereas the Half Moon Bay branch provides scholarships, tutoring, mentors, active participation in other coast side organizations and programs unique to this branch, and whereas, through its many interest groups, the branch provides social and educational outlets benefiting members in the community. And whereas AAUW's mission is to advance equity for women and girls through advocacy, education, philanthropy, and research. In principle and in practice, AAUW values and seeks a diverse membership and has no barrier to full participation on the basis of gender, race, creed, age, sexual orientation, national origin, disability, or class. Now, therefore, be it known that I, Debbie Ruddock, along with my fellow council members, extend congratulations to the American Association of University Women, Half Moon Bay Branch. Uh, please introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about, you know, what you've done and what you hope to do. My name is Mary Alice Pierce. I'm the president this year. Uh, we, uh, one thing that wasn't mentioned is that we do a lot with, uh, with STEM. Uh, we have a week-long program at Stanford, which we send five girls every year. 
and then we also have a STEM project at the high school for those that can't make it because we can only send five at a time to the other thing. But uh, we have been going for 50 years. I am proud to have been a member for 25 of those. And uh, thank you for this. And this is, these are our founding members. Thank you very much. My name is Ruth Raffello, and this branch actually started in January of 1967 in my living room with 27 prospective members who all became members and we chartered in May. So this is the month of our official 50th anniversary. And we chartered with 31 members and you can see how we have grown over the years. Um, I'm very proud of all of our history. Um, we do local scholarships where we award um, the last few years at least four $2,000 scholarships to girl graduates from Half Moon Bay High School or Pescadero High School, but mostly from Half Moon Bay who are entering their junior or senior year of college because our organization is much uh, more interested in getting these girls to get their degrees than getting them started and because this community supports um, graduating seniors to a great degree. Um, I can't begin to tell you uh, all of the things of which I am very proud. Um, but it has been my true pleasure to be a member of this branch for the past 50 years. Thank you. My name is Angeline Knott, and I live in Montero. And one of the most wonderful things that happened is when AAUW began, it opened the doors for me and continues to open the doors for me and I know that it opens the doors for many of our members and people that are interested in this branch. That's just about all I have to say, but thank you so much for having us. Thank you. My name's Katie Murdoch. I finally live in Half Moon Bay. I've lived all over the coast. AUW has been so active and so productive for the entire community of the coast side. Unfortunately, I don't think enough people know about everything that we do. So we do have general meetings every month and I urge all of you to come to one. We do fun and interesting things. Thank you for the proclamation. It shall be treasured and we hope to go on for another 50 years. Thank you. My membership is current. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> OK, um, we have nothing to report out from this evening's closed session. And now the city manager has some updates for us. Hi, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council Members. I've got a few updates for you today. I'm gonna to try to give you a roadmap because I think I've not done that in the past and uh, you don't know when the ending is coming near. So today I'd like to give you an update on budget, the library construction project, parks master plan, uh, a reminder about disaster preparedness day, an update on the Kelly Avenue uh, situation, uh, sea change, um, an incident at the Johnston House, and then some work we recently de did at Poplar Beach. So, I'm going to begin with the budget. I just wanted to mention, and as you know, uh, Council knows, originally we had scheduled today to be our first budget study session. Um, we've had to move that to the next meeting, which is May 16th, and wanted to just make sure that the community was aware that we were having the budget study session on the 16th, invite everybody to join us, provide comment on our recommended budget, 
We'll be using the base budget methodology as we have in the past, and I know that some uh, community members have an interest in providing some requests and information to the council, so just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware May 16th, which is the next council meeting. Um, moving on then to the library construction update. I'm gonna look for, where did John go? A little bit of help on the work. If you've gone out there, we don't have any recent pictures of council members uh, peeking over the fence, but if you are going to be there, let me know. We'll take a picture of you as well. Um, <laughs> and John? Well, it's a pleasure to, to continue to watch and, uh, and see this uh, transform at the site. Um, if you've been out there, you watch the video, it uh, continues to go up and we're starting to see vertical elements, which is always um, exciting. Um, so they're uh, finishing up the preparation for the spread footings, which is the, again, the preparation for June pour of the, um, of the slab, which is a very exciting time. Uh, they're also putting up and starting to put up the rebar columns. So you can see again, the vertical pieces to that. And then um, they uh, completed shotcrete forms testing. So they basically uh, were testing the shotcrete to see and make sure the consistency is there. And so the form before and the shotcrete in after. And so they could see that, make sure, and then they'll test that and make sure that the mix and everything is right for moving forward on that. So uh, work scheduled for uh, this month of May um, includes uh, ongoing work with utilities. Um, installation of the beginning of the radiant piping uh, for that goes into the slab for radiant heating. Um, you're looking at again the shotcrete forms and work rebar the shear walls and what's exciting I think here uh, also is the grade and base rock and the curb and gutter for the parking lot the site parking lot which will also then allow us once that uh, work is done to be able to move the construction trailer and, and some of the storage onto the, uh, onto the site and off the street. And I think everybody will be thrilled with that. And again, we're looking at June at this time, um, seems to be right on schedule to um, hold on for putting the slab in and then really moving up with the vertical elements. Um, so we're, we're continuing to work through response in terms of schedule and issues, but um, today is the best I can get you is uh, basically the project duration right now is a, it was set at a 492 calendar days um, schedule. Um, as of today, we've been 77 days under construction, 415 remaining, and we've used eight um, rain days out of um, the 30 that were um, accounted for, so we're in pretty good shape given we had this much rain this year. Um, we're uh, almost used uh, less than a third of those uh, for that point, and uh, we are, um, again, right on schedule, right on pace to, um, to move forward with the slab in June and start the vertical elements and moving it forward. It's not me, but I'll pass along your, your goodwill. Thank you. Um, if I could, the, um, I just wanted to uh, remind folks that the deadline for submittal of your online surveys is May 5th. So please go to hmboutdoors.org and fill yours out. Um, exciting times with the Parks Master Plan, and uh, we also um, had a very successful um, open house. Um, certainly, I think with most events, we'd like to see more people out. We'd really like to see some folks with children and kids and stuff out to get a, a balanced approach to this at times. So there'll be more opportunities, so we're going to try to figure out how can we get folks out um, and, um, and perhaps some... Um, varying opinions about what the parks and what our bikes and uh, trails should look like and paths. And um, Ma, do you want to do this or me? All right. So we have scheduled the neighborhood meeting for the Kelly Avenue um, work um, with the evening of May 17th. Um, so we'll be sending out notices to all the uh, property owners and residents um, affected by that, basically from Highway 1 down to the Coastal Trail. We did send out a, a letter and a notice that went to all of those residents and property owners. Um, so that is the official um, date at this point, and that'll be over at the EOC um, evening meeting, 7 o'clock. 
Uh, a quick one with uh, sea change. Um, we, we did a, a more extensive update, but I wanted to remind folks that your comments are due May 5th to the county for um, sea change. So please um, get those in and move those forward. And also to thank those who are in attendance. I know two of you at least were here on Saturday morning for the workshop, and I know there were others from the community as well. So thank to all who participated in that. And uh, a little bit of an end note, which I'm not happy about, nor should anybody be happy about. Uh, a few months ago, we installed really nice gates at the Johnston House here, the driveway going up the hill. And over the weekend, somebody yanked those out and cut those out and took them away, and we don't know where they were. Um, we are very surprised that someone didn't hear or see it. Uh, so if anybody did, we filed a police report Monday, and, uh, but if anybody sees a couple of new gates, these were very new, popping up somewhere, please let us know or let John Munsey and his folks know at the sheriff's office. Otherwise, if you work in the scrap metal business and you see those, please let us know. <laughs> Uh, but we will be replacing those and uh, perhaps maybe going to a heavier duty um, steel, um, much like what we have at Poplar Beach. Yes? How about putting a picture of the gates on our website? So if somebody runs across a gate, they can say it's that or it's not. <laughs> I wish I had a picture of the gates. <laughs> No, we have, we have the plans for them, but no one uh, ever thought to have to take a picture of the gates when they were hung, so maybe somebody has it, but otherwise you would have had a picture of the before and the after, but <laughs> who knew? <laughs> and I think that concludes, um, thank you for making that a, a bad situation, but happy uh, and nevertheless, and, and at least humorous. Uh, so that include, concludes, um, well, wow, we added Poplar Beach. I was, um, thank you, um, glad to, to do that. So, um, oh, gosh, um, so they surprised me with a new ad. Um, and, uh, but if you um, have been down to the uh, Poplar Beach access uh, down to the beach, uh, we did maintenance that uh, we, uh, had done for years and years and years, and we decided to get back out there and do the maintenance that we should be doing. So this was graded out, filled a bit with material, and uh, a much more um, pleasant experience getting down to the beach. Obviously, this is still a, sort of a step in the right direction, and uh, we're, we're looking at some other ways to improve the bottom area where it's pretty steep, and we recently put up some fencing along the top area. If you hadn't looked over that area, it's one of our um, storm drain pipes that have now um, blown out some area there and we're gonna have to look at and deal with. So um, unfortunately, the, it just continues, but this is a great ad. I hope everybody's enjoying that. Okay, thanks. Thanks for an informative report. And yes, the Poplar Beach Trail is, is much improved and we're getting lots of positive feedback. Um, are there any other reports? Okay, so I'm just going to uh, give a little um, mayor's update about community activities, and I, I really only have one, and it's a very important one, and that is uh, May 4th is Coastside Gives. Um, so Maverick's Coastside Foundation sponsors the second local giving day, Coastside Gives, and only local nonprofits are shown on the Coastside Gives website. Um, so you might consider going to this website. Um, it's www.coastsidegives.com and um, consider contributing to um, one or all of these wonderful organizations. And uh, the participating nonprofits this year include Coastside Children's Programs, Coastside Hope. Some of these are hard to read. Excuse me. Um, Puente, The Heal Project, Alice, that's A-L-A-S, Wilkinson School, Village of the Coastside, Half Moon Bay Coastside Community Foundation, Apple Tree Dental, Boys and Girls Club, Mavericks Coastside Foundation, Rotacare Bay Area Inc., 
Anyway, there's, there's senior co-signers, Cabrillo Education Foundation, and AAUW. And I just want to uh, acknowledge some of the partners helping make, make this happen, and that's Alifano Technologies, Half Moon Bay Brewing Company, uh, Half Moon Bay Coastside Chamber of Commerce, Miramar Farms, Recology, and uh, New Leaf. So please go to the website and con uh, consider contributing to our community in any number of ways. Uh, Councilmember Rarbach. Um, you can also go to New Leaf that afternoon and speak directly to some of these nonprofits and contribute and find out what they do. And a lot of them do wonderful work. Thank you. That's good information. Um, so we have public forum, and I only have a couple of blue speaker forms here. Um, the first speaker would be uh, Marion Pott. Could you please come to the podium? Good evening. My name is Marion Pott, and my business name is Miramar Dog Training. I moved to Half Moon Bay with my family in 94 and started my business a couple of years um, later upon seeing a great need here on the coast side for professional dog training and canine behavior management. At the time, there was no one qualified to teach well-rounded, extensive, positive training group classes and private training is not affordable for everyone or desirable for the needs of everyone's dog. I'm a sole proprietor, but have been affiliated with a number of organizations over the years in conducting group classes, both on the coast and over the hill, including nonprofit dog training clubs. I was approached by the city of Half Moon Bay Recreation Department many years ago and was asked if I would start a dog training program with them. My quick answer was yes, if you can provide indoor space. And the city's quick response was, you can use the Ted Adcock Community Center. So that began a very positive working relationship with both the city and recreation, which has survived the transition to the city of San Carlos recreation and back again to the Boys and Girls Club of the Coast Side in conjunction with the city of Half Moon Bay. In this very room, I generally teach four sessions a year involving two classes back to back on Thursday evenings winter, spring, summer, fall, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m., with each class running for seven weeks. The beginner level class often has 15 students and with the intermediate slightly fewer. The classes are very popular, referred by our local veterinarians, word of mouth, and recreation publications. In nearly every session, I have elderly people, people with disabilities, and families with children. Indoor space is vital for them to attend group classes with their dogs. A few weeks ago, I was told by uh, Ms. Sanderson of the city uh, via phone call that this current session would be the last that would be allowed indoors and that my planned summer session would have to be moved to an outside location. I was only told that changes were being done to the community center and dogs would no longer be allowed use of the building ever. If you were to show up on a Thursday evening following my last class, you would not know that two hours of dog training had just occurred. My classes are safe, clean, human and dog friendly. I'm known to go above and beyond to help people have special needs, either because of their own limitations or because of their training difficulties or both. I'm able to give more help because of the nature of these indoor classes. Classes are profitable to recreation and providing about half of their class enrollments every session for all classes. In closing, I would just like to say that because of the weather and daylight savings, summer is about the only season that might allow for outdoor classes here on the coast. And yet we all know what July can be like when we're, you're longing for a fireplace and a hot chocolate. So the Director of Recreation, Julio Serrano, is in full support of my classes and their need to remain indoors. And I'm grateful for his leadership and assistance in providing a great environment for these classes and also to the City of Half Moon Bay over the years for its support as well. These classes have served our community well, and isn't that what an excellent recreation program is all about, the community? So I thank you, Honorable Mayor, and the members of the City Council for your time and consideration in allowing these classes to continue. Thank you. Patricia Billifer. 
Did I pronounce that correctly? You did. Okay. Hi, I'm Patricia Billifer, and um, I have lived on the coast now for 12 years. I have a son who has a learning disability. He's age 33. He's mentally 12, 15. And we have a puppy that we brought here four years ago for dog training. I feel this is safe environment. In case if he lets go of the leash, the dog's not going anywhere. My nervousness is if we were out at a open park, which they had spoke about, he could get loose from my son and my son doesn't have the capability mentally to run after him and get him. Yes, I'm a paranoid mother because I'm protective of him. I appreciate your guys' support to look at all children that have learning disabilities and what's available for them in this community. And if you look around, there's not a whole lot. So my son is always saying, what is there to do in Half Moon Bay? How do I answer that? Yes, you have a park, but it gets kind of boring. You have the skateboard. Yes, that's fine. But what do they have for kids after hours? It's great to have this to bring them to, show them responsibility, and they feel like they're accomplishing something. It always makes you feel good when you accomplish something. So I'm asking for your support to help back us up to keep this within a safe environment. Thank you. Erica Finkel. Hi, my name is Erica Finkel and I live on the coast side. I just wanted to also voice support for Marion Potts and her classes. Um, I think it's been, um, I've been in participating in her classes with my adopted rescue dog and I have to say he's a very nervous dog and he's come to think of this exact room as a safe space in which he gets to meet people that he's come to really know and enjoy um, and I don't think that that would be the same in an outdoor setting. Um, and I also want to say how, how heartwarming it has been to me um, to be in classes with Patricia and her son, but also with elderly and other disabled people, and to see them have a space where they can still be proud dog owners and train their dogs. And so I wouldn't want that to be given up. Um, and thank you all for providing this space over so many years, and hopefully we can continue to do that. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so um, we're moving on to the consent calendar. And as you can see, that's pretty much all we have this evening, uh, other than the city council reports. Um, however, we do have a, um, for item 1B, we do have a revised uh, classification that um, has been amended to reflect some additional language about understanding of uh, stormwater management practices and natural systems and that sort of thing so that we get so that we can hire someone uh, that's balanced between sort of gray infrastructure and green infrastructure like low impact development uh, things like that so it's the uh, the sheet is at your place and if you concur um, whoever makes the motion to approve needs to um, uh, you don't have to pull the item, but you can make a motion to approve the consent calendar, um, uh, including uh, a revised I move item to approve B. the consent calendar as amended. Excellent. I second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, motion carries unanimously. So folks, we do have a short meeting this evening because there's lots going on in terms of budget preparation. So our, our next meeting on the 16th will be a lot more meaty. I uh, hope you'll come by and, and hear about uh, our fiscal year 17-18 budget. I would ask uh, council members if they have any reports of recent activities they'd like to share. Yeah, I went um, and attended the Home for All meeting over, over the Hill, which is all about 
um, working to make sure that everybody has a home to live in. It's a, it's a county led um, by Don Horsley and Warren Slocum, our supervisors, and includes many of the public agencies that deal with housing in the county. Um, we're moving forward. We're working right now on a marketing program, an outreach program, so that we can get the community to be aware of what we're doing and what a good organization it is. Um, last night, I attended the Big Lift meeting with Mayor Ruddock, and I'll let her talk about that. It was great fun, and I learned a tremendous amount. Um, also learned that there's a lot of work to be done and that um, it's going to require the participation of everybody in our community to make sure our kids uh, are literate. But I'll let Debbie talk more about that. And I went to a SAM meeting, a Sewer Authority Mid-Coast meeting. And that's about it. Anybody else? Yeah. I'm Go ahead. Council Member Kowalczyk. A um, couple things. Uh, attended the Progress Seminar in Monterey, which is basically a retreat with the elected officials from San Mateo County, um, and had study sessions uh, with expert speakers on a number of areas, including uh, traffic congestion, affordable housing, uh, and uh, medical marijuana. I'm oh, sorry, uh, recreational use of marijuana. And uh, I have all of the uh, data and documentation from those sessions. Uh, and I'll scan it and provide it to the city manager and if you could share that with the council. There's some interesting statistics that we need to be aware of regarding the recreational use of marijuana and some data from Colorado and Washington uh, that we can look at. And this was a document from the sheriff, uh, sheriff's office and also a document from um, a consultant that's advising kind of a proponents of, of uh, recreational use of marijuana. So I participated in that and so did the mayor. Um, and also attended a fundraiser for San Risas uh, Dental Clinic, uh, which was a, a great cause that, that does good work in our community along with Councilmember uh, Harvey Rohrbeck. Thank you. Councilmember Eisen. Uh, just from the Chamber of Commerce, uh, there's a new magazine that just came out for all of Half Moon Bay. This went to all the different hotels, um, businesses, and residents. Talks about uh, all the events going on in Half Moon Bay, all the different facilities, all the restaurants you can do use all the hiking you can do. So it's, uh, it's a nice piece of information that is now available uh, from the chamber. Council Member Robert? I went to a SFO roundtable which uh, deals with airport noise. And uh, one of the interesting things there was they had made a recommendation to the FAA about the height at which, uh, the elevation at which uh, planes can take off from SFO. But the FAA is unable to change its regulations because the Trump administration says you cannot uh, add a new regulation without taking away two other regulations. So if you think federal action isn't affecting you yet, think again. Thanks. Yeah, I noticed some big jumbo jets regularly coming in over Half Moon Bay about 3 a.m. now. Low. So I, I attended um, Seat Change San Mateo County on Saturday. It was a wonderful program talking about how San Mateo County is preparing uh, for sea level rise. They recently uh, released a, a, a draft report that talks about impacts to numerous um, expensive uh, county assets, including uh, the Sewer Authority Mid-Coast Side Plant in Half Moon Bay, and also the county dump. They didn't look at everything, but they looked at it select assets. And um, they introduced new information that's been released having to do with the, the extreme end of projected sea level rise, which is now up from five and a half feet to 10 feet by the year 2100. So it was a chance to engage the information, but we played a wonderful game called Game of Floods, where they gave uh, each uh, group a map of an island, and you had to uh, anticipate sea level rise and you know whether or not you would move assets inland or build seawalls and that kind of thing. Anyway, it was really great fun. And um, uh, Jill Ekes, our planning director, attended. And uh, there was pretty good turnout. I think about 30 people, 25 or 30 people. Not everybody RSVP'd. We were expecting only a handful, but, but many more came, so that was great. 
I did attend the, uh, the Big Lift meeting um, sponsored by the Coastside Collaborative, and that program is all about getting 80% of third graders uh, literate, you know, being able to read uh, by that grade. And um, it involves a lot of different uh, nonprofit partners in the community. And it became very clear to Vice Mayor Penrose and myself that um, it wasn't just a sort of a school-related issue, but literacy is actually a community issue. You know, if you have problems with literacy, you have problems with public health, you have problems with you know, economic problems and social equity problems. So all the problems created by a lack of, of literacy um, permeate you know, our society and, and cause all kinds of uh, problems. So we were talking about the potential for a community-wide campaign to support you know, reading and writing um, on the coast side here and, and undertaking some special activities to help that along. And I also attended the Progress Seminar. It was very interesting and meaty this year. We, as Rick mentioned, we have handouts that we can share with everyone. And um, I attended a SAM meeting where we approved on an emergency basis some planning for the segment of the Intertie pipeline that's been leaking due to uh, various storms. But that was about it. So I have nothing else to report for this time. Okay, thank you. So the next item is a discussion of possible agenda items for future meetings. Does anybody have anything they'd like to talk about? Councilmember Isaac? I'd like to discuss the, and it's kind of funny that uh, we, were, we were almost on this subject tonight, but um, the progress of the, um, Let's, let's see, how do I put this? The progress of the... Um... <laughs> no, no, no. The... <laughs> we, we were talking about this earlier. Um, hold on just a second, it's gonna come to me. Not the Boys and Girls Club, but the... Recreation, Recreation Department, oh, thank, you. thank you. The Recreation Department and the Boys and Girls Club transition or just where we are in that process. Um, that's it. Thank you for the reminder. Yeah. Yes, I, I would like to, I think it'd be good for us to have a discussion about about the, the transition, how it's going and what kind of where we're at with that at a future meeting. Just a, a staff report and update on that would be great. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, well with that, we could entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, this meeting is over. Thank you for coming.